Hello, just uh, returned from delivering some cases of Choice Cleanings calendars to various places here in Mississippi and uh, thought I'd take a break to tell a little story to you. I was telling about some famous people that I had met over the years and about 50 years ago while I was still at university, we were visited by Dr. Lewis B. Leakey, who was a paleoanthropologist who worked primarily in the Olduvai Gorge in Africa, and he was looking for the precursor of the modern human, the so-called missing link uh, between the primates and humans. For some reason, they felt that was the place to look, and it always bothered me because I understood certainly Darwin's position was that the black man was an earlier evolutionary model, and in fact, I was in England at the time when finally two Aboriginal bodies that had been killed and stuffed at the direction of these Darwinists had been put on display as a evidence of evolution. The whole thing really is a hoax and an utter shame. The scripture says that God has made of one blood all the nations. Yes, there are nations, but not races. There is one race, the human race, and it's a, it's a terrible thing that still in the universities this idea continues. So anyway, Louis Leakey was coming to speak. By this point, he was completely crippled with arthritis. He crawled across the stage, dragging himself with two canes, and he made this presentation. Now, he was one of the most famous evolutionists in the world at that time, and he was funded by the National Geographic. He and his son Richard had done a fair bit of work down there, and also his first wife and then the second wife that he had after he divorced his first, they also were involved in these digs. Well, I was quite astounded that virtually all of the slides that he showed were paintings. They were artist renderings. And we recognize that when we're talking about evolution, macroevolution has never been found. Whenever there are mutations, there's a diminishing of information, not an increase of information. And yes, the idea that there can be uh, slight adjustments in an organism to take advantage of changes in the environment. It's true. The beaks of the birds in the Galapagos, for example. Uh, well, God built into our genetic bank various options so that we can adjust. But so-called natural selection is a very different thing than the transmutation of species, that actually there would be sufficient changes that would occur that would move from one species to another. And this has never been seen. It's not in natural sciences, it's not in the world today, it's not in the fossil record, and it's not in theoretical science. It just isn't there. And many evolutionists are coming to the point where they realize that Darwin's theory has huge flaws and is not workable. And they finally come to the conclusion that the idea of a frog turning into a prince is probably still a fairy tale. Well, I was in this large crowd listening to him speak, and everything was speculation, and everything was, we don't have the answers yet, but give us another 20 years. Well, we've had 50 years, and we still don't have the answers. As he drew to a close... I thought to myself, they're not going to force this man out through the crowd. There's probably another way of escape. And so I went out and went around the back of the building. And sure enough, there was a car waiting with the engine running and a driver there and a little side door. So I stood by the door. I was the only one there. And when the door opened, there was Dr. Lewis Leakey face to face. And I said to him, sir, respectfully, I'd like to suggest you seem to have everything uh, in speculation, that you didn't have the answers yet. I would suggest to you that the answer is found in faith in God and receiving the Lord Jesus as personal Savior. And that makes a lot of things clear. And he said, I can't accept that answer. And he kind of brushed by me and got in the car and away he went. But I've often thought of that engagement and thought of the scripture that says, by faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. 
And in the end, with all of the problems that are faced in the world, isn't it a wonderful thing that there's one source for solutions? You don't have to go to a whole slew of experts or specialists, whether it's economic or physical or emotional or national, whatever it might be, the Lord is the expert on every subject. And the scripture says, cast all your care on him because he cares for you. This is the most practical thing. When we realize our times are in his hands, God is working out his will, our trust is not in men, our trust is not in horses and chariots, our trust is in the Lord. So God encourage you today and remember this, that whatever the question, Jesus is the answer. And may the Lord fill our hearts with comfort and with love so that we can love others around us, people going through distress, letting them know that the Lord Jesus draws near to each of us as we open our hearts to him. 